a great Sunday evening. Hopefully everyone had a great Easter. For those of you out there uh, who don't celebrate, happy Passover or happy Sunday if you're just not religious at all. Uh, but welcome to the Sports Note for uh, Sunday night, April 9th. And we just actually came off the final round of a very, very entertaining Masters. Uh, you had all the storylines there. You it, This was the first um, real kind of butting of the heads between the PGA Tour and Live Golf. Um, you had several guys in uh, from Live Golf actually in the mix, or as uh, I, I like to uh, unaffectionately call them, the Blood Money Tour. You had uh, um, turncoat Phil Mickelson finish second. You had turncoat Patrick Reed finish in the top ten. Uh, you actually had Brooks Kepka, uh, another turncoat who was actually uh, in the lead for the first three rounds and then started off steady alongside of uh, of eventual champion John Rahm. Uh, through the first five or six holes and then started to go downhill had a double bogey i want to say on eight or nine uh fell out of the lead and then rom just kind of took off from there uh to playing very very smart golf um in route to winning his first green jacket and it's his second career major after winning the uh the u.s open a couple of years ago um and you know kudos to uh, uh to scotty scheffler uh, for you know, handing off the the green jacket, still being in uh, you know, um, a, a very good story through most of uh, through most of the tournament. Uh, if Scotty wasn't going to win, you were kind of hoping that somebody like a John Rahm would be able to finally break through and get their first uh, get their first green jacket. Um, John Rahm is one of those guys where you either love him or you hate him off the course. You really like him. Uh, there's some of the things that he does on the course that some people may take a little bit of issue with, um, but he keeps his nose down. Uh, he, he does his job. He does it very well. He's one of the, uh, you can count on one hand, the best players in the world, and he's definitely really... you don't really get past these three fingers when you're putting up, you know, Rom uh, in that conversation. You got to go Shoffley, uh, you got to go Scotty Scheffler, you got to go John Rom. Uh, but one guy who's not in that group anymore is Tiger Woods. Woods, uh, this is now the second consecutive major that he's withdrawn after day three, uh, despite qualifying for the final round. Back in May, if you remember, uh, Woods shot a nine over in round three and then withdrew. And then he, you could tell through the first six or seven holes, he was in a lot of discomfort yesterday in round three with the weather and everything. As it turns out, he re aggravated uh, the foot injury. Um, I believe it was the plantar fasciitis um, that hobbled him much of last season. Um, to the point where it was very difficult for him to walk on the greens. Uh, and then when play was halted due to weather um, a little bit earlier than might have been expected yesterday, the thought process by the PGA Tour was to finish out round three very early Sunday and then basically have these guys turn around and then play 18. So some of these guys would end up playing probably 20 to 24 holes uh, in in a lot of aspects, especially a guy for Woods who was not going to be in contention and was going to actually have to be one of the first people to tee off and then have to kind of wait for everybody to finish up was going to be one of the very uh, was going to be one of the uh, the first people to go off again on Sunday. So Woods withdrew again due to injury. And can we finally now start to talk about the fact that the Tiger Mystique is officially gone in the game of golf? Woods' last win on tour was the 2020 Zozo, was the 2019 Zozo Championship, and it was the first time that event had ever been held after being added to the PGA Tour schedule. It took place in October. Uh, I want to say it was the week before Halloween of 2019, uh, really before the pandemic and everything kind of shut down. Um, Woods has not won a major since the 2019 Masters, and before that, he hadn't won a major since 2008. Um, so 
he's not going to catch Jack. He's not going to catch. He's not going to win three more majors. Uh, he just needs one more tournament to break Slam and Sammy Sneed's uh, career record with 82 wins, where they're locked right now. His next one would give him 83. Move him past Sammy Sneed. Uh, he's more than 50 million dollars out in front of I want to say maybe 48 49 million somewhere in there on the career money list ahead of the uh, listen to the three guys that he's in front of that are basically within two hundred thousand dollars between separating uh second from fourth uh that number two is Rory McIlroy number three is Jim Furyk number four is VJ Singh McIlroy certainly is going to get himself closer uh, to Tiger, but he's never going to eclipse Tiger. There's no way that Rory is going to win $48 million more million on tour as Rory is now uh, north of 30. Um, but Rory is still able, uh, Rory resurrected himself and, and can have a little bit of a career uh, resurgence, could probably get a couple more majors in there. It's conceivable that Rory right now sitting... Um, around I want to say it's close to 71 72 million in there um could certainly get himself into the 80 85 range uh, again possibly pick off two maybe three more majors if if the cards fall and that's the, that's the great thing about golf is that it's not um it's it's not penciled in uh, nobody actually saw Tiger doing the Tiger Slam as great as he was and as dominant as he was. Uh, nobody saw him basically, nobody thought Tiger was going to win five green jackets, that he was going to win four PGAs, and then he was going to win three U.S. Open and three British Opens uh, along the way. And then all of his personal life got in the way, and then he's only played counting this week where he couldn't even finish the final round. He's only played seven tournaments in the last three years coming off uh, all those injuries after the car wreck where we all thought he was never going to play again. But um, but the idea that people still hold on to hope with Tiger, um, it's not good for the sport because you've got a lot of guys in there uh, right now, you've got your Sh- uh, Scotty Shufflers, you've got your John Roms, you've got guys uh, in there like your Xander Shoffley. Uh, to an extent, even as though we hate to admit it, there's still a couple of guys on the Blood Money Tour uh, like Dustin Johnson, uh, like a Patrick Reed, who were former number ones or top five in the world and have a, at least one major under their belt that if things fizzle out, could they potentially reapply for their PGA Tour card and come back there? Uh, it's, you know, sure, it's, I, don't want to, I don't think it's going to be a lifetime ban uh, for them for jumping over, but they're going to realize very quickly that, yeah, you know, the money is there. First of all, look at where the money's coming from. Um, but we're only playing 54 holes instead of 72. Uh, we're not drawing the crowds that we uh, that the PGA Tour does, especially at at places like Augusta when they actually go to uh, Sawgrass when they head over to uh, um, St Andrews or or anywhere across the pond, uh, wherever the U.S. Open is going to be held this year. Uh, it's not something that these guys are going to be able to get on there because of the of those tours being linked uh, and, and directly falling under uh, the Professional Golf Association um, and, and their bylaws. So they had the opportunity to, uh, you know, maybe request some change or, or do something as, as opposed to defect completely to a tour uh, again, backed by the Saudi group, um, for more money and and less holes, but it's less shared revenue. It's fewer eyes on the product. It's a lot more ridicule. They're into their second season. It's certainly not going to turn around. I don't see, you know, Tiger defecting over there. I also don't see a scenario where Tiger really plays at a competitive level where he's going to contend for a major in any stage of his career at this point. He's 47 years old. Uh, we did see Freddie Couples make the weekend uh, this week, 
and couples at 63, the oldest player ever to make the weekend in uh, in a major. Uh, kudos to Freddie. Um, but Woods, with the fact that he's publicly admitted he's only going to play in a handful of tournaments and he'll play in majors, uh, if this is another foot injury, who's to say he's ready for the U.S. Open? Who's to say he's ready for the British Open? Um you know, for the final two majors of the year. How many more tournaments is he going to play this year? Could he only end up playing five more tournaments this year? Um, when Woods was on top of his game, nobody could touch him. We all know that he was the greatest golfer of his generation. There is no denying that. You don't want to amass 82 career victories and 15 majors um, and tie, and, and basically be nipping at the heels of the greatest of all time in Jack and tie arguably a guy who's on the Mount Rushmore in, in Sam Snead for the all-time record um, just completely by accident. But the the technology has advanced. It's not Tiger having Nike basically revolve their entire golf design around him. Um, Nike golf isn't even a thing anymore. Uh, the technology is caught up, and now he's not the guy out driving everybody else. He's the guy getting out driven and having to rely on his short game uh, and his approach a lot more than he ever really had to because he would uh, he would be such a dominant player that everyone would crumble underneath him. Nobody's scared of Tiger anymore. He uh, he had to adapt, but with his injuries, he's never going to recover to the player that he was. And this is actually better for golf in the long run. The less that Tiger is playing, we we always will remember that everyone at some point was a Tiger fan. If you were never a Tiger fan, you're denying yourself. Um so it's better to just admit it and kind of move on. But now this is a Tiger. Could he be approaching maybe Tom Brady or or Michael Jordan uh, areas where he, he's considered the greatest of all time, arguably, but hung on way too long? Uh, if Does Tiger take a year maybe two off, uh, wait until he's 49 or 50, and then come back and play 10, 12, you know, maybe 15 tournaments uh, in a year and see what happens. Does he maybe go to the senior tour? I, I honestly think he would much rather hang it up for good than move over to the senior tour uh, at that point with, with his pride. Um, but again, he's got to realize in his mind he just can't hang the way that he can the uh, now the way that he could not maybe even five years ago before all of the uh the medical conditions arose um with with just the crop of players that are out there right now we saw Jordan Spieth even stay on the front page of the leaderboard uh for a good chunk of today after Spieth's kind of had his career renaissance uh, so to speak. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment box below. Did you guys watch this weekend? What do you think? Does Tiger still have one more run left in him? Uh, did, does he ever, uh, Does he actually break Sam's record? Uh, does he actually maybe get one more major? Or is this basically it? Is it time to move on from Tiger altogether and start putting our attention on the guys taking golf into the next phase on uh, where we are now. Again, like your Scotties, your John Roms, and your Jordan Speeds. But I will be back with you guys here very soon. No wise guys this week. We'll be here next week. We kind of explained that towards the end of last Thursday's show. So we will see you guys very, very soon. Take care.